What's going on everybody? Thank you guys so much for watching. Today we have your top five programming languages of 2019. This list doesn't pertain to any specific type of developer. You could be a web developer, a game developer. Um, a lot of the languages on this list are versatile and can be used um, for different contexts. Also, this list is not in any particular order. So number five verse one, uh, there's really no difference there. So without further ado, let's jump into number one. Number one on the list is gonna be Java and C Sharp. Yes, I bundled these two and it's cheating a little bit, but it's okay, it's my list. So before we jump into why, I wanna give a little bit of a history lesson here. So Java was originally developed by Sun Microsystems and then acquired by Oracle, whom today own the rights. In about 1999, 2000, Microsoft then created their own version of Java, which is now called C Sharp. These are very similar languages. They're both developed with object-oriented programming in mind. So that's why I kind of bundled these two together. If you're using a language like C Sharp, um, you're probably gonna be in a .NET environment, um, which is very popular with among you know a lot of financial institutions. And the reason I chose C Sharp is I really see a bright future for the language. Um, you think about Microsoft Azure, uh, it's really the number two player in cloud right now behind AWS. Microsoft also has phenomenal documentation on C Sharp. Um, it's pretty much, in my opinion, like one of the best documentations for any language out there. Now Java on the other hand, and if you watch my channel, you know Java is my bread and butter, it's my go-to uh, whenever I interview, it's, it's you know, my top language. However, I do see Java kind of on a slight decline. And the reason is kind of, you know, who's the main advocate behind Java? Um, in recent years, it's been Google. When you think of um, Android operating system, you know, the Android SDK is written in Java. Um, also a lot of Google source control written in Java again. However, they've been moving away from that recently. And the reason for that is they were recently sued by Oracle uh, for rights on Android. So for Android, um, they've been moving towards a language called Kotlin. Um, they're officially gonna stop supporting Java. Java also developed and owns Golang, which is a language that they're also moving towards. With that being said, Java is still one of the most popular languages in the world. Um, I don't see it going anywhere anytime soon. So that's why Java as well as C Sharp are on my list. Number two on my list is gonna be Python. Now Python is one of the most popular languages in the world. Um, and it's really been picking up steam, I think over the last, I would say five to 10 years. Python is a high level interpreted language. Um, it can be used for scripting as well as other things. I think one of the most attractive things about Python is it's very easy to pick up. A lot of people who are new to programming are using Python as their first language. At the university that I was at, we used Java for our intro classes. However, when I was there, they switched over to Python for the first couple of intro classes. Another fantastic thing about Python is the packages that you can include. It's great for scientific calculations. Um, you have packages like NumPy, SciPy, Matplotlib. It's used a lot for artificial intelligence. Um, you have Scikit-Learn. Um, it's great for uh, natural language processing. Um, so any type of like machine learning AI is going to most likely be using Python. Python is great for web server development. You can build your web server using a couple frameworks. They have uh, Flask, uh, there's also Django. Um, so that's something that you can use Python for. Uh, there's also Pygame, which can be used for game development. So obviously it's a very versatile language. Um, it's easy to pick up, like I said, that's why it is number two on my list. Coming in at number three, we have JavaScript. Now, if you're a full stack engineer or a front end engineer, um, it's almost a prerequisite that you need to know JavaScript. It's really one of the most popular languages in the world. Um, it's number one on GitHub. So obviously used by a lot of people. Uh, every browser has a JavaScript renderer on there. So obviously a very widely used language. Now JavaScript, uh, if you don't know, it was written originally for Netscape. Uh, it was developed in 10 days and they got a lot of things wrong with the language. Um, now I'm not gonna go into like all the specifics and the weird behavior and there are a lot of them. Um, however, I will recommend that you read the book, JavaScript, The Good Parts. So this book, um, which I'll leave a link for in the description, um, really highlights the good parts and the bad parts about JavaScript. And it really uh, gives you a nice subset of the language where you can still pretty much do everything, um, but you won't run into any weird stuff that the language uh, can get you in trouble for. 
Along with that, um, like I mentioned, if you are a full stack developer, uh, it gives you the opportunity to have your entire stack all in one language. You can use something like a mean stack, which is gonna be MongoDB, Express, Angular, and Node, which allows you to have your front end as well as your back end, as well as accessing your database written in JavaScript. JavaScript also has a lot of different front end frameworks that you can use. Now, this can be seen as a uh, good or a bad thing, depending on, you know, you have to learn more frameworks, uh, but you have your popular frameworks such as React, Angular, and Vue.js. Coming in at number four, we have C++. Now, C++ for me uh, holds a special place in my heart because it was the first language I learned and it's what really got me into programming and computer science. So C++ is, and this may be debatable, but um, it can be seen as an object-oriented programming language, but it's more like C masked with object-oriented programming on top of it. And you're not gonna have anything like um, a garbage collection, so you have to manually allocate and deallocate your memory. I recommend if you're starting a new project um, and you wanna take the object-oriented approach, I would definitely use a language like Java or C Sharp over C++. However, C++ is fantastic for game development. It's a compiled language, so it's gonna be an executable, meaning it's gonna run a lot faster than an interpreted language. And it's going to be a lot faster than J uh, Java. Even though Java is a compiled language, it's running on top of a virtual machine, which is going to be running on top of an operating system. Whereas C++, on the other hand, um, is compiled um, and ready to execute for the specific system that it's on. And with gaming, you want it to be as responsive as possible. So that's why C++ is really the number one language used for gaming. A lot of the gaming engines are going to be written in C++, like Unreal and Unity. Um, so really for game development, it's really second to none. It also provides the standard template library, which I believe uh, has done a really good job of keeping the language modern. So overall, I would say maybe not the best language to start out with, even though that's what I started with. Um, however, for certain use cases, I believe that it's a really fantastic language. Last but not least, we have SQL, Structured Query Language. Now, I mentioned JavaScript for front-end engineers. Well, if you're going to be a back-end engineer or a full-stack engineer, you're most likely and almost always going to be working with some kind of database. And SQL has been around for decades. Um, I remember probably like about five years ago when NoSQL was kind of like the hot thing. Everyone thought SQL was going to be obsolete. However, it's done a pretty good job of standing the test of time. And SQL is a language which is pretty easy to pick up. However, it can get complex really fast. I've worked in some financial institutions and their stored procedures that they have are thousands of lines. And it can get even more complicated if you're dealing with dynamic SQL. However, if you're able to get really good and master SQL um, and just master relational databases as a whole, um, you pretty much don't, will not have a problem finding a job anywhere. Uh, and that's why SQL is on my top five list. All right, there you have it guys, my top five, technically top six languages to learn in 2019. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Uh, let me know down below if you agree, disagree, let me know what your top five is. Also, if you'd like, please subscribe to my channel. Um, I'll do, you know, kind of computer science, techie related videos. Uh, sometimes I'll do like programming tutorials. Um, so uh, please subscribe, it would mean a lot. And um, that's all I have for this video. Uh, thank you guys for watching and have a great day.